there, I'm Corey Thomas, and I am putting together just a quick video of me giving our template presentation, the Echo Colorado core presentation, to give you a little bit of a foundation in terms of uh, someone from the program center giving context to this presentation. I encourage you to um, utilize the script that you that also accompanies the slide deck, and hopefully this is a good resource for you in terms of hearing someone give the presentation before um, you give it. Uh, so I hope that this is a helpful resource for you. So I'm presenting today on Echo Colorado, a new approach to spreading knowledge and hoping to give everyone some context to what Echo Colorado is, kind of the who, the how, the what of Echo Colorado, and hopefully leave you with a resource that you're excited about and interested in engaging with. So Echo Colorado is a replication site of Echo out of New Mexico. So the original vision was established by a specialist in Hep C, Dr. Sanji Varora, out of the University of New Mexico. He was treat the only uh, physician in the state of New Mexico treating hepatitis C and was having the, so many one-to-one -one relationships with patients. And he was finding that there were so many patients that he was not able to meet their needs in terms of his accessibility to them and availability to them. He had a nine month plus waiting list. And by the time patients were, were getting to him, they had advanced liver disease and were so far along in terms of the disease. So that is kind of the birth of ECHO. And the interest in increasing his accessibility as a topic expert to community providers in order to be a mentoring and capacity building resource to them, to learn how to treat hep C, to, to coach them through the process in a dynamic way where they could bring their own cases um, to the experience. So he was giving inter in information about best practices related, related to to treating hepatitis C, and they were bringing their cases so they could continue to build capacity to treat their patients locally. So the overall motto of ECHO Colorado and ECHO in general, that it is a global initiative, is that knowledge held by one, by one definitely has the power to change lives. That one to run one relationship um, is critical across the board in health and healthcare. Um, however, we believe that knowledge shared by many has the power to change the world and recognizing that not only in terms of expert knowledge um, with, with particular topic areas, but the community expertise and the community perspective, that, that knowledge and that expertise is equally as valuable. And so creating a space where that connected can have a really high impact um, outcome is the goal. So some of the reasons why ECHO exists and ECHO Colorado exists is to really, uh, building off of the last slide, increase access to that expert knowledge. So making those mentoring relationships possible, making that multidisciplinary if possible, expert uh, panel accessible for questions and dynamic interaction. In addition, uh, really hoping to reduce professional isolation. So especially across the state like Colorado, a very rural state, um, health professionals across the board can become very isolated. And so connecting them with their peers, with relationship, with face-to-face -face interaction and engagement um, helps reduce that professional isolation. Ideally, we're reducing some need for high cost offsite training. So it is it is really expensive to travel to a seminar or a conference or a workshop in order to build capacity with your practice. And so wanting to keep that high quality of training, but also accessible to where you're at and being able to access it um, 
over the computer and, and via the web. Ideally, we're creating a community of learners. We're making those connections or we're creating a space where those connections can happen, where they continue to connect and engage after an ECHO experience is completed. So knowing who your peers are, knowing where different folks across the state are engaging in ways that you want to continue to grow is really valuable and important related to the why of ECHO Colorado. So there's a couple of different offerings. The first what is related to our learning series. So this is the traditional ECHO experience that um, ECHO Colorado is um, traditionally providing. There are three different key components related to an ECHO learning series. First, it's multiple hour-long sessions, either over the course of a couple of weeks or maybe a few months. So it's typically weekly or bi-weekly connections, the same group of individuals meeting for those multiple sessions. Within a session, there's a very brief 10 to 15 minute presentation, didactic presentation, typically using slides by an expert, by a topical expert. These experts are different typically for every session and it's really focused on what are we trying to accomplish in that session. So experts might look differently, and we'll go into who's involved in just a moment. But the third component is that it's, there's a significant amount of facilitated peer discussion. And depending on the ECHO topic, it might be an actual patient case, so it might be case-based learning. Overall, it's experiential-based learning, so recognizing that there are experiences that individuals in this learning community, learning series, have experience with this topic, and they're really asked to engage and share what they know, what they learned, what their challenges were, what the barriers might be, what the successes and the tools and resources that have been helpful to really build that relevant base of knowledge across both in terms of the peer network as well as the expertise. So who's involved in a learning series? I've already mentioned a couple of these players. There is um, a facilitator, so someone who's really responsible for the learning as a whole. The facilitator is consistent across all of the sessions. This individual is really responsible for ensuring that the presenter doesn't have all of the time, so it is not unidirectional, and really ensuring that there is highly engaged conversation and dialogue and keeping an eye on um, where there's opportunities for peer learning and peer sharing. As I've mentioned, there's a presenter, so a topical expert who gives that 10 to 15 minute presentation. Again, this presenter is typically different in each of the sessions relevant to what that topic of focus is for that day. And then we have panelists. Ideally, panelists are bringing a unique perspective to the topic. So that might look like a pharmacist or a behavioral health provider or a social worker. So somebody else who has um, a relevant role in the topic and is there as an expert to provide and remind folks of how a family might be in, impacted by a particular piece of advice or how um, a drug might respond to a different treatment protocol. So panelists are a, another unique perspective and really hoping to guide at that dynamic learning experience. And then we have the learners, these, this peer community that can share and learn from each other and has that community expertise. So really wanting to highlight this is a consistent group of individuals, a cohort of learners throughout every session. The second um, offering I'll share with you is a community of practice. So while a learning series is really focused on trying to get um, the community of learners from point A to point B in terms of capacity, really focused learning, very specific learning objectives and outcomes, um, very focused on what the presenters and the panelists are bringing to the table. This community of practice is still focused on learning, sharing, engaging, and connecting in a way that might be a little less structured. So this is still multiple connections. It might be different people. 
throughout the course of the community of practice that is offered. There is still facilitated peer sharing. So it is still very much about bring your experience, bring your case, bring your questions, and as a community of practice, let's learn from each other, let's share our knowledge with each other so that we can continue to have um, an engaged way to connect and learn from each other related to a particular topic. So the folks who are involved in a community of practice are a little, there are, are it's less weighted on the topic expert side, so there is still a facilitator who is responsible for ensuring what we're trying to accomplish, connecting the dots between what folks are saying, and ensuring that it is an engaged learning environment. And it's a peer community of learners, so folks coming together with similar goals and interests. And ideally, someone within that peer community is presenting on a particular day related to what they're doing. What are they doing in their community or in their practice that they'd like to highlight, that they have questions, that they'd like to ask their peers, um, that they're interested in gathering new resources or tools, or that they have resources and tools that they think would be really helpful for the peer community. So how does this happen? We use a technology called Zoom. This Zoom is accessible on a laptop or desktop with a webcam, with a tablet or a smartphone. As long as you have internet access, Zoom it should be really accessible. So it adjusts to it being useful with low bandwidth. We've seen folks join via Zoom on airplanes. Um, so it really is an accessible tool that still provides this really um, important face-to-face -face connection. So one of the things you can expect in an Echo Learning Series is face-to-face. -face. We want to see what's happening. Uh, we ask folks to join via camera. So it is very much this opportunity to have engaged conversation, to build relationships, and to see folks as, as you're doing that. Overall, I mentioned this a little earlier, but ECHO is to learn, to share, to engage, and to connect. These are the themes that you can expect to experience when participating in any ECHO Colorado learning experience. One of the things you can do if you're really interested in continuing to learn more about what ECHOs are coming up, what's happening, what's new, um, is to, join, to receive the ECHO Colorado quarterly newsletter. This is a newsletter that goes out four times and it has a variety of different topics that are launching that season. So we have a spring, a, fall, a summer, a fall, and a winter quarterly that goes out that is really gauged towards dynamic um, health pro professionals who impact health. So it might be um, care coordinators, patient navigators, um, community practitioners, providers, um, a variety of different audiences. In order to do, to get this quarterly newsletter, I'd invite you to take out your cell phone and text the number 2282, the, the, the following message. So, if you text 2282 Echo Colorado, no spaces, all caps doesn't matter, Echo Colorado to 2282, you should receive the following text sequence. So it will ask you for your email address, and then you will automatically be registered to receive those quarterly communications. And then getting engaged from there should be really easy. Our marketing and communications team um, pays close attention to what you're interested in and is very um, motivated to um, get you connected in meaningful ways that will help connect you in engaged learning environments so that you can share your knowledge with peers and you can learn from both experts and others. So we hope you echo with us soon. You can also go to echocolorado.org to constantly be updated on what echoes are happening and a lot of additional details that aren't listed in our echo, echo uh, quarterly newsletter.